In this video, we will see that mesh current method still works even if we have a combination of loops and meshes in the circuit. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it. When applying mesh current method, the first step is to identify and label the mesh currents. Consider this given circuit of interest which has an independent voltage source and a dependent source which is a voltage controlled voltage source. This circuit has two meshes. Suppose we label the currents as I1 and I2 as shown here. Here I1 is a mesh current and I2 is a loop current. This is because instead of using a mesh current we have labeled a loop current. However, all circuit elements in this circuit are covered. So mesh current method is still able to solve this circuit. Let's see how this can be done. The first step is to apply Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 1. In mesh 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 circuit elements. We can start at any place. Suppose we start at the independent voltage source. Mesh current I going from minus to plus so we follow the direction of mesh 1 and going from minus to plus is a voltage rise thus the first term is minus 65 as per passive sign convention next we have a voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor in this circuit the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor is i1 plus i2 Therefore, this voltage drop is 4I1 plus I2. Next, we have the 5 ohm resistor and through this only mesh current I1 is flowing. So we get 5I1. The last circuit element is the 6 ohm resistor. Again, similar to the 4 ohm resistor, now I1 and I2 are flowing through the 6 ohm resistor in the same direction. Thus, the last term is 6I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. Next, we apply Kirchhoff voltage law to loop 2. So this loop starts here goes through the two resistors, the dependent source, and then comes back at the independent voltage source. Starting at this voltage source, the first term is minus 65. Then for the 4 ohm resistor, we have 4I1 plus I2. Through the 8 ohm resistor, the current is only I2. So we get 8I2. For the dependent source, we are going from plus to minus. So this is a voltage drop. So we get plus 3V delta. Through the 15 ohm resistor, the current is only I2. So we get 15I2. And the last term is the voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor through which both I1 and I2 are flowing in the same direction. Thus we get this equation. Lastly, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation. So we need to address the voltage controlling the magnitude of the dependent source in terms of the currents. So here V delta is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor and V delta is given as 4I1 plus I2. Thus we see that we have three equations and three unknowns I1, I2 and V delta. These equations can be solved using a scientific calculator and we can show that V delta is 16 volts. I1 comes out 5 amps and I2 comes out minus 1 amp. Using these currents and voltages we can now find the power associated with the dependent source so the power associated with the voltage control voltage source is the product of the voltage which is 3v delta and the current the current flowing through here is i2 since i2 is entering the terminal marked plus we write the power calculation with a positive sign following passive sign convention now substituting the values, 
we get 3 times 16 and i2 is minus 1. So the final answer is minus 48 watt. So this shows that the dependent source is generating or supplying power in this circuit. So this example illustrates that mesh current method still works if we have a combination of mesh and loops in the circuit. However, by convention, we use mesh current method with mesh currents only. We can compare the solution using the conventional mesh current method technique. So we can identify two mesh currents, I1 and I2. These are arbitrarily chosen as clockwise he shown here and then we can apply KVL to mesh 1 and mesh 2 and write the dependent source constraint equation. Please pause the video here and compare with the equations we obtained previously when we had one mesh current and one loop current. So these equations are now different but in terms of the circuit variables the power associated with the dependent source we still get the same answer no matter what technique or what mesh current directions we use.